Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're gonna to talk about different turbocharger exhaust housing options. We're gonna discuss flange configurations, what AR means, and how to avoid common problems. The exhaust housing plays a critical role in the turbocharger's operation. The exhaust gas leaving the engine converges in the turbine housing, causing the turbine to spin. Different styles and size exhaust housings can influence the character of the turbocharger in not only response, but total airflow available. Now there's quite a few different inlet flange configurations on the market. The common ones are gonna be T25, T3, T4, and T6. Those are gonna be available in open and divided style housings, and then you move into the V-bands. Not all V-band inlet sizes are the same. As you go into larger turbochargers, the inlets increase in size also. Once you've set a power goal for your build, and you've picked a turbocharger that will meet that power goal, the manufacturers are gonna partner that particular turbocharger with exhaust housing options that make sense. So you can't put yourself in a position where you have an 800 horsepower turbocharger with a T25 flange or an 800 horsepower turbocharger with a T6 flange. So the manufacturers keep you out of trouble and narrow your decisions down to logical choices. If you're shopping for a turbocharger that's available in both V-band and multi-bolt flange, the decision will be made based off of exhaust manifold availability. If there's good V-band manifold availability, I suggest going that route. The V-band housings tend to make more power. They're easier to service in the field. They don't require a gasket to seal and you have a single piece of hardware that's mounting the turbocharger to the manifold. If you're gonna use a multi-bolt flange to hold the turbocharger to the exhaust manifold, here's some things that you should look out for. If that flange that's on the exhaust manifold needs to be perfectly flat and you should check it before you start the installation. If that flange is not perfectly flat, you're gonna have problems with leaks. And if you're dealing with a divided housing, I've actually seen the gasket break in the center and go into the turbine wheel, damaging the turbocharger. So you wanna make sure that flange is perfectly flat and you wanna use a quality hardware. That area of the engine in particular has a lot of heat. There's a high chance of corrosion, threads on the hardware can fuse together. And you can really get into a situation where it's just not fun to work on that part of the engine. If you're gonna use a multi-bolt flange, you wanna make sure that the hardware is a quality hardware, that it's of the right length. You wanna make sure that hardware is lubricated with the quality anti-seize when you're working on that. Because if you do have to go back in down the road and take the turbocharger off for any reason, and you've used a poor quality hardware, broken bolts and broken hardware in that area is just a disaster when it comes to time and money. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that flange configurations are available in both an open housing and divided housing or twin scroll. There is no shortage of information and opinion on this particular subject. I'm gonna take the path of what the OEMs see in a twin scroll world and hope that information helps you make a decision. In an OEM configuration, they're looking for the most amount of response at very low engine RPM. So 1500 RPM, 2500 RPM, 3500 RPM, engine speeds that you see while commuting around town to get the most amount of turbocharger transient response. And there is a benefit with the twin scroll housing. Most twin scroll housings in the OEM world have a split ratio. So one side of the housing is bigger than the other side of the housing and they're often paired on an exhaust manifold that is respective of the engine's firing order. And what they're doing is optimizing the low speed exhaust pulses to accelerate that turbine as fast as possible to offer the best transient response. In a racing environment where the engine is run at say 8,000 RPM and when you shift it, it comes back to 6,000 RPM. I don't think that twin scroll offers any sort of measurable benefit. But again, lots of opinions and you guys can duke it out in the comments section. I'll be just watching while enjoying a cold, cheap beer. Moving on to the outlet flange of the turbine housing, they're available in four bolt, five bolt, and V-band configurations. I would suggest going with the V-band configuration because you won't have the leak liability or hardware liability you would have with a bolted flange. Again, all the hardware that's on the exhaust side of the turbine housing is subjected to a lot of heat, corrosion, seizing, galling, all the things that go wrong with bolts. It's just kind of a nasty environment and you can limit some of that liability with a V-band flange. If you're on our website shopping for a turbocharger, the mating flange for the outlet of the turbo is partnered with each particular turbocharger to make it easy to select the right one. Now we can move to the most technical part of the discussion. That would be the AR or aspect ratio of the turbine housing. The AR is going to be the ratio of volume on the mating surface of the inlet of the turbine housing versus the volume that's surrounding the turbine wheel. 
as you go up in AR, the turbocharger will be less responsive and have more gas flow available at high engine RPM and high boost levels. As you go down in AR, that area tightens up. The turbocharger will be more responsive, but more prone to choking at higher RPM or higher boost levels. If you've been reading up on AR and you're more confused at anything, let me offer you a simple analogy. If you look at a rim that the tire is too narrow and the tire is stretched on the rim, that tire can't work in its optimized form. Same thing if the tire is too wide and it's buckled out the other way. That 0.8 to 10 range is a very organic position to be and it will complement the size of the wheels well. If you're gonna operate an engine at a very low RPM and you want the most amount of response possible, a small AR may be to your benefit. However, it's gonna choke gas flow at a very high RPM. So you have to make a decision on how you're operating the engine. If you're just drag racing and you want the most amount of gas flow possible, you can go to some of those housings that are over 1.5 ratio, but the low speed response will definitely suffer. So if you're doing this for the first time and you just wanna get as close to right as possible, that 0.8 to 10 range won't do you wrong. And if you're looking to tune the turbocharger a few hundred RPM in either direction, you can make an adjustment from there. If you're looking to optimize the AR of a particular turbocharger, a shaft speed sensor and exhaust back pressure sensor play a critical role. In a perfect world, you'd be able to have a higher inlet pressure than exhaust pressure while maintaining a reasonable amount of transient response because you don't want the turbocharger to be overly lazy. But again, each turbocharger kind of have its own character. The larger the turbocharger, the lazier it's going to be. We appreciate you watching this video and hopefully you walk away with a better understanding of turbine housing operation. If you still have questions, feel free to reach out. We have a tremendous amount of talent on staff here that can help you make the right decision the first time. If you'd like to go to our website, there's also some tools there for turbo selection. Again, you just wanna make the best choice you can the first time, that way you don't have to do things twice. Thanks and I'll catch you next time.